Now I know there are some differences between the way the I.O. is configured on uh, this production switcher from, uh, from some other switchers. Uh, can we get into that a little deeper? Yeah, you're right, Rick. That's a great idea. Let's go to source definition because I think that's always a great place to start inside all of this. That's the beginning of how I find my, my things to cut to. You'll notice that when I went to the menu, I've got that great big source list at the, uh, the left-hand side here, and I'm using some of these soft labels knobs already. The way to define a source is pretty simple stuff. Uh, select, uh, select a source, either by touching its uh, name or by dialing up its engineering ID. If it's a directly connected source, something like uh, a camera or a uh, remote uh, source to the switcher, uh, I'm pretty much finished already. All I need to dial up is the input number. You saw already how I can use my video input pop-up uh, number pads. And what I'm really defining is the connection of the BNCs to the logical sources inside the switcher. There are other choices, and that's the source type here. If I'm controlling something like a server, especially a Grass Valley K2 Summit, for instance, it would be very useful for me to be able to tell which buttons select that so that I get all of my machine control systems all running together. So if I run up to the top of my source list, you'll notice that one of my first sources is a clip store. When I touch it, instantly it changes from being a directly connected source to being one which is a device, and it even tells me which logical device I'm using to control it. Everything ties together really simply at this stage. Naturally, there are other kinds of things I could be connected to, things like um, routing matrices. So if I'm using a routing matrix, I'm not in this particular studio, I don't need one, this is where I'd be deciding which button selects which router-fed destination. If I was using the LDK Camera Connect system, this is where I would also define a source to be an LDK camera, so I could use things like scene file recall and, uh, and so on. But back to my, um, my directly connected sources. Some of those will be things like character generators, which are not merely a video source, but also a mat or key signal as well. And what I do need to do is to tie those two things together. Um, it's really simple. I tell the source that it has a key mode. We assume it's going to be a linear key mode there these days. And on my key input, just dial up the source, which is cutting the mat hole. That's it. I've pretty much now defined all of my inputs. So let's look at outputs. This is the other end of the equation, of course. And each of my outputs can be of three types. My output 8 at the moment is being used by Switch Preview. Switch preview being that little tiny uh, source selector inside the control panel, which lets me look at the look ahead preview of any of my mix effects banks. The next kind, and let's just kind of go out of order here, is aux buses. Aux buses are the traditional, almost XY control panel, you know, the, 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 the traditional look and feel of things. But every single aux bus can be on any output. I don't have to have. Um, yeah, the traditional output one is AUX bus one, no longer. And if I like, I can have AUX bus one on more than one output, if that helps me. Realistically, what we're trying to do here is to make studio design that much easier for our uh, engineering designers. Also notice that I can give away control of my AUX buses so that the um, Grass Valley router control system can take control of AUX bus too, to sort of expand its own size if I'm not using all of my outputs from the switcher. The last kind of output is fixed output, and this is the one that I think our studio designers really want to hear about. They can get to all of the outputs of all of the mix effects banks, including things like my EDPMs, and we will be talking about those later, and fix those to BNC outputs so that for studio design it's very much more easy to guarantee to pick up program preset A output, program preset clean feeds on guaranteed BNCs.